don't know, it is a very brief um, summary um, of this uh, concept developed by uh, the Italian vascular surgeon Paolo Samboni, um, who um, suggested that um, due to a, a likeness of um, the changes um, in, or he likened the changes you find in um, uh, deep, um, uh, or in, in, in venous disease, in lower limbs, the chronic venous disease, uh, with um, the, um, poten a potential um, a pathophysiological mechanism responsible for MS as well. So the origin of increased uh, uh, iron stores in the leg is the extravasation of uh, erythrocytes and um, then um, this uh, in, in conditions when there's significant stenosis and these erythrocytes are then or red blood cells are being degraded by macrophages and the iron is released and um, causes an inflammatory response. So the concept was, does that make sense as a, uh, a, a concept for MS as well? So from here, this was um, from a talk given actually here at the uh, Royal Society of Medicine in 2006. Uh, we move on to the um, uh, uh, famous paper from uh, the JNNP in 2009, uh, where um, he described the um, uh, or where they described the first uh, results of, of their study. Um, alongside this um, paper, there was um, a quite a, sort of an enthusiastic um, uh, editorial comment by a friend of um, uh, uh, Dr. Zamboni, Claude Franceschi from. Uh, the um, uh, Salpetriere in, in, in France. Um, um, this is um, just a, a brief illustration of the, um, the uh, 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 venous uh, system here with the superior sagittal sinus, here um, uh, the uh, uh, jugular veins, and here the vertebral veins coming down there. And I think what's quite uh, obvious, although this is obviously only a, a model, um, is that there's quite a lot of variation in the, um, the diameter of these, um, uh, these blood vessels. Now, um, he, uh, they uh, tested six and five patients, and they were placed on a tilt table so they could in examine in an upright and in a recumbent position uh, using a, a Doppler ultrasound uh, technique and defined five criteria um, um, as listed here, whether there was reflux, so blood flowing in the wrong direction, essentially in the anterior jugular vein or the vertebral veins, in a supine or sitting position, whether there's reflux in the deep cerebral veins, um, whether there's evidence of a stenosis um, of the internal, uh, internal jugular vein, um, whether there's no detectable flow at all, um, in uh, any of the, um, these vessels, and um, then whether there's a reverted postural control. Now, when you lie down, your uh, blood in the, uh, that flows from the brain is mainly drained, at least in the majority of us, uh, through the jugular veins, whereas when you stand up, that's not the case. It's then mainly the vertebral veins, so the posterior uh, 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 veins rather here in that area and not here, these, um, these large vessels um, at the front or at the neck. Yeah. Now what did they find? Um, the surprising finding was that when uh, here are all these five um, criteria uh, listed and uh, they had obviously quite a large control population as well but what was um, uh, surprising to most of the uh, um, uh, EMS world was the striking um, proportion of changes that have been reported here. Uh, in fact, all of the, uh, the 65 patients, or each of these 65 patients studied, had at least two of these, or fulfilled two of these criteria, such that um, that meant that you were actually able to diagnose MS on the basis of a Doppler ultrasound, okay? With 100% sensitivity and 100% specificity, that would have been 
the diagnostic test uh, uh, per se. Um, and certainly, um, um, uh, Professor Zamboni was very confident about these results. I mean, that's obvious because um, what I found here is an application for a patent in the United States submitted in 2008 um, where he suggested a system for uh, the diagnosis of MS based on these Doppler results. I mean, you can easily count here one, two, three, four, five. Okay, these are the results from the internal cerebral veins or deep cerebral veins, and these are all the other four criteria. They would go into a PC, and then a signal would um, pop up and um, say, okay, this um, gentleman or lady has MS. Um, now, a patent is not only, it's not only, <clears throat> doesn't only look very nice on his CV, but um, usually there's also something involved much more of a much more mundane um, uh, part, which is um, money, so something to, to sell. Um, and just to, to, uh, to, to reiterate that point, what this would mean, um, if that would have all been true, uh, we could actually um, get rid of this um, ridiculous uh, neurological examination, because we only need the Doppler, wouldn't need an MRI, neither uh, what you can see here on the upper right, a um, visual evoked potential, and this awful procedure of a lumbar puncture, all replaced by um, this system, um, and this is the um, uh, system that um, Samboni and um, uh, his colleagues in it Italy use by Esaioti. But as it turns out, um, it's actually the combination of Professor Zamboni himself and the system that is actually required to make this diagnosis. And I'll go um, through um, a, a little bit of um, the evidence for, for, for that or for the contrary of that. Um, but let me just um, make this brief point. Everyone can look at that on Wikipedia and we've um, been discussing this before, evidence needs to be reproduced and uh, needs to be underpinned by uh, other um, groups. Uh, so it's uh, very much sort of um, about verification and reprodu uh, reproduction once the, um, the, um, uh, the methods are clearly laid out. And this is a quote from that paper in the JNNP by Zamboni and colleagues, uh, suggesting that it should be noted that our ultrasonic assessment can be easily performed in the clinical setting. So here we go. We go through um, now a few elements um, asking the question, if CCSVI were a risk factor for MS, then what? It would be consistently found in patients with MS. Now, this is the paper that I uh, co-authored, but in fact those three names with the red line, on, uh, red underlined, are those colleagues that have actually done the study um, using the Doppler ultrasound. And um, essentially all, uh, we, we had 56 patients in this, uh, in this um, group with MS, 20 controls, and um, there was only one patient who actually fulfilled a single criteria. Uh, ten patients who each fulfilled a single criterion, but none of them, um, uh, any of the two criteria for CCSVI. Um, now, the people, or much of the discussion on the internet and blogs and whatnot, um, have um, surrounded this issue about, well, these are uh, vascular people, and um, here's the sort of uh, renegade who uh, now makes sort of the, the, the um, or comes with a completely new idea and a new approach to the condition. And on the other side, there are the neurologists who are only negative and um, they don't believe that and, and, and whatnot. But I must say, all of these um, names up here are neurologists. They're all trained neurologists, and in fact, um, um, there was this sort of issue about, well, um, they cannot do this type of study because they're neurologists and so on, and um, which was a bit funny because um, 
two of the authors of the paper have actually uh, edited a book on ultrasound of um, the cerebral arteries and veins. Um, and if you look a bit more closely on the paper in JNNP, these two are actually quoted quite extensively uh, by uh, Samboni. Okay, but this is only one study, obviously, okay, and it wasn't blinded, so that was certainly um, a valid criticism. So what about a blinded study? This is um, one that's just been um, uh, published again in the um, uh, JNNP, and this was a triple blinded study, meaning that um, the, uh, the, the patients were, and the um, normal controls, they were covered with a, um, uh, a sheet and were not allowed to talk to the examiner, and um, they did only sort of the, 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 uh, the Doppler ultrasound, and that was it. That was basically their only contact with um, the individual. Um, the investigator were, were um, sort of blind, uh, were, were doing then the analysis offline, so not sort of in the presence of the, um, uh, of the proband or uh, the individuals, and the statistician uh, later on was also blinded to which, which group the, um, the, 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 the individual was assigned to. So that's why they called it triple blinded. And what you can see here is that, um, uh, that uh, this group actually identified that one of the criteria uh, used by um, Zamboni and his colleagues, uh, which is that there's a, 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 a seeming uh, stenosis of the internal jugular vein, was actually much more common in controls, but not significantly different from the MS patients, meaning it is actually not of I mean, much value. Okay, there we have another study here using MR, MR venography, different technique, obviously not Doppler, uh, Doppler ultrasound, um, but certainly done by a group that is not a suspect um, of not being sort of familiar with CCSVI or not sort of supporting the whole concept. This is by Robert Zivadinov from Buffalo in, uh, in the US, um, a, an early collaborator with uh, Professor Zamboni, and uh, what they did was using MR venography to characterize the venous system in MS and healthy controls. This was 57 versus 21. And uh, just to show you an example here, this is um, uh, an, sort of a, a prominent sort of left external jugular vein, okay? So it's much less prominent over here. And um, all right, so let's move on to the next uh, issue. Um, if CCSVI would be a risk factor, then it should actually be something that precedes um, the, the, the condition. Um, and this is again data from Zivadinov presented last year at the American Academy of Neurology. Um, this uh, um, is um, a study of, uh, well, 243 uh, patients with MS, which is quite a substantial number. Um, here, some with clinical isolated syndrome, so that is somebody with the first demyelinating event, uh, a group of uh, people with other neurological diseases and healthy controls. And th first of all, there was a large proportion of patients with MS actually who had, did not uh, fulfill their CCSVI criteria, and certainly there was no majority um, in terms of. of um, uh, or not, not, not a clear-cut majority for those with clinically isolated syndrome uh, as a kind of or suggestive of preceding uh, uh, the condition, the sort of definite diagnosis of MS. Okay, um, next point is if CCSVI would be a risk factor, there would be raised venous pressure, okay, in, um, in the head. Now this is a, um, a recent paper um, um, showing that um, the intracranial venous pressure is actually identical with normal controls. Okay, these were uh, MS, a group of MS patients down here, and this, are the, this is the control group is identical. They used a method called ophthalmodynamometry, so that's an eye uh, uh, associated. Um, uh, pressure monitoring and 
identical. Okay, so no um, uh, raised um, pressure in in the in the head. Okay, um, iron is stored in the body as in the um, form of ferritin. So if so if iron deposition due to venous um, blockage or congestion would be the cause, then um, uh, ferritin should be higher in um, patients with MS compared to controls or people with other diseases. Um, the study was um, done here at um, a group of, uh, at Queen Square. Um, this is the control um, group. This was a very large uh, group and then here patients with secondary progressive MS, primary progressive MS, relapsing remitting MS. These two groups were not different from the control group at all. There was a slight increase in secondary progressive MS and interestingly, they had a follow-up uh, element to this study, so three, over three years where they had another uh, lumbar puncture and this group had, then had actually a lower level uh, and there was clearly no association with, uh, actually there was an inverse association of their ferritin level and their disability. Um, uh, so um, those with a higher ferritin had, uh, uh, were, were less disabled by, by their condition. Okay, um, if we would accept that CCSVI exists and um, and uh, we would treat it, um, then alleviation of CCSVI uh, would actually help. Now, the only uh, um, uh, study so far that is out there, because um, there's several more um, perhaps to come, I don't know, um, is the one by um, uh, Paolo Zamboni himself again, where um, the, the, uh, the previously um, uh, investigated group published in the JNNP uh, was now treated, um, so 65 uh, patients. And this is the, the um, um, comparison before the um, procedure and 18 months after. And what I've underlined here, these are <coughs> secondary progressive MS and primary progressive MS patients. What I've underlined here is one um, assessment uh, tool we use, the multiple sclerosis functional composite. And, um, those of you who have seen, who have seen the odd paper uh, will easily identify this is the p-value, which should at least be 0.05, if not uh, lower. It's more than uh, 0.1, meaning there's no significant difference between these two um, uh, uh, groups whatsoever, at least at this uh, stage. So, what CCSVI cannot explain is all that you can see here. Genetics, the fact that um, uh, uh, immunomodulatory uh, treatment um, uh, works, albeit um, certainly sort of in an imperfect way, but um, clearly we do have um, 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 measurable and evidence-based proof that they work. The rap uh, relapsing remitting cause, uh, the influence of EVV, vitamin D, and just about everything else you know about MS. So, this is now from uh, the um, uh, editorial from the current paper in JNNP about uh, CCSVI, the one that I study I showed uh, earlier with a triple blinding, where Omar Khan asks, is it science or science fiction? The jury is out, I think. Um, it's the $100,000 question, or in fact, it's the $2.4 million question, uh, because this is what the American MS Society has invested to uh, further investigate uh, the presence or existence of CCSVI in seven projects, and uh, the, uh, the results certainly sort of eagerly uh, awaited. For the time being, anyway, we, we, we feel it's simply um, unacceptable that people are actually being um, siphoned off their money for a treatment for a condition that, uh, whose existence is not really evidence-based as yet. So um, this is the end of my talk about it. And um, perhaps if you really look for a... Uh, 
uh, treatment, then perhaps better ask for the credentials in the first place. Thank you.